We're pulling out the common thread on the banks here this morning, and that's examining the differences between how each bank is able to withstand the Fed's higher interest rates. Net interest income across all three firms down in Q1 from Q4. Here with more is Saul Martinez, who is the HSBC head of U.S. Financial. Saul, thanks so much for taking the time. I know it's a busy morning for you as well. You've been able to hop on the calls here and listen into what the executives have to say. What most notably sticks out to you from the tone and what you're hearing from these bank executives right now? No, thanks for having me. Well, we've only had J.P. Morgan's earnings call thus far. So we're still waiting on Wells Fargo. We're still waiting on City. Obviously, the results for all three of them are out. I, I think the, the the outlook for net interest income is, is important. I think there was some uh, expectation that perhaps J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo would increase their outlook for net interest income. And J.P. Morgan kept the $90 billion net interest income guidance, which, you know, I think you know, if you think back to the first quarter, uh, we had six rate cuts priced in. Now we have around two rate cuts. So I think there was some 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 hope that uh, that change in the, in the rate outlook, coupled with the fact that J.P. Morgan has been fairly conservative in their net interest income guidance, that that would lead to an increase in the outlook. And the tone was was is you know in my view so, was somewhat cautious. They are still saying that they feel like there is pr going to be pressure on deposit pricing that maybe that they are over earning on uh, deposits. In other words, the de spread over deposits has been abnormally high and that will continue to normalize. Um, and uh, yeah, so so the, the tone on that point, I think, was a bit cautious. And, and I think that's what's uh, that coupled with the expectations going into the quarter and just a view with J.P. Morgan, they tend to do, you know, they, they you know, they, they've tended to have very strong results and also uh, you know, continually increase their outlook. And, and the fact that they didn't in this backdrop, I think, you know, surprised some folks. Um, so th I think that that part was important for Wells Fargo. Um, also, you know, the net interest income was a little bit soft. I think there was some hope that their, their guidance for net interest income uh, of declining 7 to 9% would be increased. They, they kept it. Um, but some other parts of their quarter were strong. And this was true of all, the, all three who have reported. Uh, investment banking was strong. I think overall expense management was pretty good as well. Um, so I think there's a little bit more, it was a little bit more of a mixed bag with, with Wells Fargo, despite the fact that they didn't increase their net interest income outlook. So I'm curious what you make of the uh, improvements that we have seen within investment banking, what you just mentioned there. And that was true across the board for all three of these banks. Do you think that signals any sort of optimism just about deal activity, what we could see in the IPO market to come, or is this just off of more depressed levels? Um, I, I think there's some optimism here. I, I, you know, if you look, if you pierce, in, if you you know peer into the numbers, of what you had this quarter uh, was really strong debt capital markets issuance, um, and J.P. Morgan uh, highlighted that there may be a pull forward there of activity and, and the sustainability there might be um, a quite, you know, somewhat questioned. I think on the other side, you know, things, equity issuance was better. It really will depend on, on you know, IPO activity and whether that continues. I think pipelines are good. Um, the the m and side is, is sort of the interesting dynamic because it, it was depressed even in this quarter. And um, even though you know um, announcements which which haven't closed, that that's when you get paid is when, when they close, have been moving up. But J.P. Morgan kind of threw a little bit of cold water, or at least expressed a bit of a cautious tone there, indicating that the regulatory backdrop remains really challenging, hmm. and there's some uncertainty as to whether that will you know whether you will see a very strong rebound there. I tend to be a little bit more optimistic. I think if you look at investment banking relative to uh, historical normalized rate levels, given the equity uh, uptick uh, or the increase in asset prices and equity prices, um, I, I do think you will see you know, greater investment banking activity, which bodes well for others, including Goldman and Morgan Stanley, over time. It, it's still a question mark as to the strength of that recovery and, and over what right. time frame that occurs. So just lastly, we only have about 20 seconds left here. Should people, should investors be confident in the year of transformation over at Citi? I, I think so. I, I'm, I'm positive on City. Um, I think you'll see better cost performance in the next year. I think it was encouraging that they kept their $80 billion uh, you know, revenue guide. I think credit was good. Uh, the market side was good. Was, was pretty good. So I, I'm positive uh, looking forward. And, and I think they're, they're, 
you know, hopefully on track to deliver better results into the back end of the year. All right. Uh, Saul Martinez, HSBC's head of U.S. financials. Thanks so much for taking the time to hop on with us on what is a very busy morning. Thanks so much, Saul. You're welcome.